The man you just saw in the video is the son of the King of Saudi Arabia, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. And yes, just like that, he gifted a random kid a Benz just because he asked. That's the kind of money these Arabians have. That's how freely it flows. But do you know the kind of lifestyle they lived when they were much younger? When they were kids? The luxury cars, the opulent mansions, the exotic animals, the priceless and downright weird purchases they made just because they could? Well, that's why you've got me. Together, we are going to dive inside the life of Saudi Arabia's richest kids. Who are the richest kids in Saudi Arabia? Supercars are not a status symbol for Saudi Arabia's richest kids, they are the norm. But who are they? Who and where in Saudi Arabia can we find these 1% of Saudi's juvenile elite? The truth is you can't. Before you will see a 15-year-old Saudi rich kid in the media, there's a higher chance you'll find flying goats in the Sahara. But that doesn't mean we don't have details of what some of the older elite Saudis did when they were kids. And it should come as no surprise that the crown prince is one of them. Most of the Saudi's elite live to be so old that their kids remain and behave like kids well into their 40s and 50s. The former king of Saudi Arabia was 90 years old when he died, and the current king, Salman of Al Saud royal family, is currently 87 years old. So it makes sense that when the crown prince Mohammed bin Salman spends, he spends like a kid in a candy store with a blank check. To be frank, you have no idea. But before we get into the conversation of the spending habits of Saudi Arabia's richest kids, let's talk briefly about its richest families. The money has to come from somewhere, right? So we have two quick questions we must answer. First, what makes Saudi wealth any different from the wealth of other countries in the world? And two, who are the 1% of the 1% of Saudi's elite? The answer to the first question seems obvious. Oil money, but it's a lot trickier than it sounds. It is true that Saudi Arabia is known for its vast oil reserves, and the concentration of super-rich households in Saudi Arabia is among the highest globally. The country's GDP, fueled by its massive oil reserves, generated around $335 billion in 2023. To put that in perspective, in that same year, Iraq's GDP was $220 billion, Morocco's was $104 billion, Rwanda's was only $7 billion, and Tonga's was a mere $469 million. In 2023 alone, Saudi Arabia exported $236 billion in crude petroleum. The main destinations of crude petroleum exports was to China for $56.1 billion, Japan for $34.3 billion, India for $32.7 billion, South Korea for $32.5 billion, and the United States for $16.6 billion. However, around all of that oil money is a booming commerce that has elevated its elites to a kind of wealth that would put all of Wall Street to shame. Saudi Arabia's 1% are not just made up of oil tycoons. They include businessmen with worldwide companies that dominate the global landscape. These individuals have bank accounts so deep it would make Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos blush pink. Why? Because while most of the American elite bind their wealth to assets, the Saudis have both the assets and liquidity, billions of it. And while these same Americans have to pay billions in taxes. In 2023 alone, Elon Musk's tax bill was north of $10 billion. Most of the Saudi elites don't even have to bother about taxes. These numbers clearly show that Saudi Arabia reigns as the king of wealth in the Middle East. This is why their wealth is beyond comprehension, and why they live lives of luxury that most of us can only dream of. And it is also why their kids can live opulent lifestyles that most of us would never reach, even if we lived a thousand lifetimes. So this moves us to our next question. Which of the Saudi families are the richest? Well, well, the obvious answer to that question is the Saudi royal family. The Al Saud royal family, led by King Salman, who ascended the throne of Saudi Arabia in 2015 upon the death of his half-brother, King Abdullah. He is the father of the Crown Prince Mohammed ibn Salman, whose personal wealth is estimated to be around $25 billion. And this is where things get interesting because Forbes magazine estimates that King Salman's personal fortune sits around $18 billion, making him one of the world's richest royals. But how does this even make sense? How how is the son of the king richer than his father, richer than his family? Well, this is where the ice breaks and where you have to forget about net worths. Because in Saudi Arabia, the most powerful man isn't King Salman, it is son, the crown prince Mohammed. And you must know that where the influence of money ends is where power begins. In Saudi Arabia, the crown prince has absolute power. Enough power that in November of 2017, crown prince Mohammed bin Salman led a sweeping anti-corruption campaign that targeted and led to the arrest of prominent figures within the Saudi Arabia. Arabian elite. 
Hundreds of individuals, including prominent businessmen, royal family members and government officials, were detained and sentenced. One of such detainees was Prince Al-Walid bin Talal, a billionaire businessman and investor who was richer than the Crown Prince himself. Why did he do this? Power. It's that simple. And that's why there is nothing that the Crown Prince cannot afford. His father, King Salman, has at least 11 known sons and one known daughter, but they all have access to the Saudi family's $18 billion fortune. One more element that makes the lives of the richest kids in Saudi just a little more different is the landscape of their country. Sure, the Crown Prince and his siblings could hop on any of their private Gulfstream jets to Paris for gelato on a whim. However, when they are at home, they lounge in a paradise-like landscape that is as ancient as it is modern. Picture this, vast deserts adorned with gleaming skyscrapers, luxurious hotels, and extravagant shopping districts that rival the best in the world. The jewel in the crown is Riyadh, the capital city, where luxury knows no bounds. Imagine strolling down the bus streets lined with designer boutiques, dining at Michelin-starred restaurants, and indulging in pampering sessions at world-renowned spas. This city is a playground for the kids of Saudi's elite, where every desire is catered to with impeccable service and unparalleled sophistication. Next, we have the coastal city of Jeddah, a haven for luxury enthusiasts and beach lovers alike. Here you'll find exclusive waterfront properties boasting breathtaking views of the Red Sea, private yacht clubs, and high-end resorts that redefine the meaning of indulgence. The Corniche, with its chic cafes and designer shops, is a magnet for the jet-set crowd looking to see and be seen. Okay, this is going a little off the rails. Let's circle back. What is the lifestyle like? Exotic pets, fast cars and shopping sprees. There is an Instagram page devoted to the cars that Saudi rich kids buy, but even they agree that these kids live a very discreet life. But the fact is, to these kids, fast cars are boring, and you'll understand why if you stick around long enough. Because what sets the Saudi Arabian kids from others is their love for exotic animals. While most rich kids may feature a cute puppy or two, the kids of Saudi Arabia take it to a whole new level. Lions, tigers, and other exotic creatures grace their posts, showcasing their affinity for the extraordinary. It's important to note that that while places like Dubai are cracking down on the availability of wild animals as pets, the rich kids of Saudi Arabia continue to pose with these animals as if it's nothing out of the ordinary. It's a display of their audacity and their ability to acquire and showcase the most exclusive and unique possessions, but their extravagant lifestyles extend beyond Instagram. Let's move away from the royal family and take a closer look at some of the prominent individuals in this elite circle. Princess Dina Al Juhani Abdul Aziz is known for her expensive and upscale fashion, which comes as no surprise considering her previous role as the editor-in-chief of Vogue Arabia. She was not born into the Saudi royal family, she married into it. Her father was a Saudi communications minister, and she grew up living a mobile life between the Middle East and the United States. While she wasn't born poor, it was her marriage to Prince Sultan bin Fahd bin Nasser bin Abdulaziz in 1998 that introduced her to a completely different level of wealth and status, and she's used it well. They call her the Anna Wintour of the Middle East, and she has her own story the DNA store in Riyadh. Another influential figure in this world of wealth is Prince Fahad Al Saud, the CEO and founder of New Arab Media. He is one of the only, if not the only, grandsons of the King of Saudi Arabia to have an actual career in tech. In 2009, Prince Fahad was hired as the head of user operations for Facebook Arab, where he helped launch Facebook in Arabic. He often describes himself as the friend that you have to explain to your other friends before they meet him. His life is a testament to his wild antics and extravagant lifestyle, providing a glimpse into the world of the rich kids in Saudi Arabia. However, despite their immense wealth, the rich in Saudi Arabia face strict social restrictions. Gender segregation in public places is a norm, with many malls allowing only women to enter alone or men accompanied by a woman. Restaurants often have separate sections for families and singles, and even separate ordering lines for men and women. Public movie theaters are banned, as the privacy and darkness of a theater could allow men and women to mingle without supervision. These restrictions extend to women. Women are not allowed to work in most jobs with limited opportunities in education, medical fields, and recently as store clerks. Traveling alone is also restricted, requiring specific forms or electronic authorization. Women are not allowed to drive, and until recently they had to rely on private drivers or male family members to get around. It's important to note that progress is being made. In 2018, women were granted the right to drive, marking a significant milestone in social reforms. This step forward is a testament to the changing landscape in Saudi Arabia, where even the rich 
rich are affected by strict rules and regulations. So while the rich kids of Saudi Arabia may enjoy a life of extravagance, they're not exempt from the social restrictions that shape their lives. Their Instagram posts may showcase their luxurious cars, exotic animals and lavish vacations, but behind the scenes they navigate a society with limitations on their freedom. When it comes to the rich kids of Saudi Arabia, their extravagant lifestyles extend beyond social media. Their shopping habits and love for fast cars are a testament to their immense wealth and the privileges they enjoy. Shopping is a staple in Saudi Arabia, and the rich kids spare no expense when it comes to indulging in the finest things money can buy. Wearing name brands and luxury items is not just a fashion statement for them. It's a way to showcase their wealth and status. They drop bags of cash on clothing, throwing thousands away on a single shirt without a second thought. One of the most luxurious shopping centers in the country is the famed Kingdom Center, located in the capital city of Riyadh. This major landmark features high-end shops like Fendi, Gucci, and Avanti, among others. It's a haven for the rich kids of Saudi Arabia, who love to spend their time and money in this luxurious setting. The Kingdom Center is a symbol of their extravagant lifestyles and their ability to access the best that money can buy, but their love for shopping doesn't stop there. These young individuals have a penchant for dropping bags of cash on the most lavish clothes, accessories, and designer items. They spare no expense when it comes to looking their best and wearing the most exclusive and expensive brands. For them, shopping is not just a leisure activity. It's a way to assert their status and demonstrate their immense wealth. However, their love for luxury extends. Beyond fashion, the rich kids of Saudi Arabia have a deep passion for fast cars. Ferraris, Porsches and Mercedes are just a few of the high-performance vehicles that fill their garages. These young individuals are not content with just one luxury car. They own fleets of customized vehicles that turn heads wherever they go. One prominent figure in the world of fast cars is Prince Turkey bin Abdullah. Turkey's fleet includes some of the most extravagant and unique cars, such as a six-wheeled Mercedes Brabus G63. Lavish parties. No one in the world parties like Saudi kids, and no one in Saudi Arabia parties like the prince. The best example of the sheer opulence of his parties will take us back to the summer of July 2015. The crown prince was just 29 years old at the time when he decided to throw a party that was the stuff of legends. It all happened on the exclusive private island of Velar in the Maldives, a place designed to be one of the world's most luxurious and expensive destinations. So MBS, as he's often called, spared no expense, renting out the entire island for a staggering 50 million dollars. Picture this. Four dozen private villas, some perched on stilts overlooking the azure Indian Ocean, each with its own butler, private deck, and swimming pool. The island even had a snow machine for those who wanted to experience an artificial blizzard on a tropical beach. Talk about a vacation fit for royalty. To ensure absolute privacy, MBS and his entourage had about 150 stunning models flown in from Brazil, Russia, and other glamorous destinations into the islands. They were flown in before MBS and his guests. The parties were set to last nearly nearly a month, featuring A-list entertainment like Pitbull, Psy, DJ Afrojack, Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. This was the epitome of high-end revelry. Now the Crown Prince valued discretion above all else because he was aware that the Saudi public was growing weary of the ruling family's extravagant spending. To keep the festivities off the radar, smartphones were strictly forbidden. Staff members were only allowed to carry basic Nokia 3310S for communication, and two unfortunate souls who made the error of breaching this rule were fired on the spot and sent off the island. The models, who arrived by the literal boatload, underwent STD testing upon arrival, and only after passing were they ushered to their lavish villas. After this, MBS and his guests arrived at the island for entertainment, and the Crown Prince has so much fun that at some point he even took center stage, even hijacking the DJ booth during Afrojack's performance. The parties, illuminated by the glow of the Maldivian moon, often continued until dawn, but as with any tale of excess, word got out. Less than a week into the festivities, local publications caught wind of MBS's presence, and the news spread like wildfire. Swiftly, the Crown Prince and his glamorous entourage departed, leaving the island to return to its serene solitude. Yet this episode did little to curb MBS's appetite for luxury. Shortly after, he splurged over $500 million on the Serene, a 439-foot superyacht that redefined extravagance. Complete with two helipads, a submarine dock, an underwater viewing room, a jacuzzi, a movie theater, and a grand piano over 
overlooking a sweeping spiral staircase, the Serene became the crown jewel of his opulent fleet. And that's not all. The Crown Prince also acquired a French chateau near Versailles for over $300 million, adding more grandeur to his ever-expanding portfolio. This lavish spending might just be a reaction to his comparatively modest upbringing, where financial constraints shaped the young prince's perspective. MBS, the eighth child of King Salman, didn't enjoy the same international education as some of his siblings. Instead, he stayed in Saudi Arabia learning about the intricacies of his rivals within the royal family. Financial concerns hit him hard at a young age, learning that his father, before he became king, had amassed no serious fortune and was dangerously indebted. But MBS, being the entrepreneur he is, didn't dwell on financial constraints for long. By age 16, he had accumulated around $100,000 from trading gold coins and luxury watches gifted by his wealthy family. He then ventured into stock trading, later founding his own companies, including a trash collection business and a group of real estate companies. Ruthless at times, MBS earned the nickname Father of the Bullet for allegedly sending a bullet to a land official who had denied him a plot. His influence in government also raised eyebrows, with allegations of insider trading surfacing. Today, he is the richest Saudi royal and its most powerful, but all of this is still too pedestrian. Let's move on to the quirky and downright weird purchases of the Saudi elite. The weird spends. Remember when I said supercars are boring for the kids of Saudi Arabian elites? Well, what I forgot. To mention is the fact that they love to dip anything they touch in gold, especially their supercars. In fact, princes like Turkey bin Abdullah have fleets of gold Lamborghinis lined up in front of the Grand Palace. These custom-made masterpieces are not your ordinary sports cars. They are a testament to the prince's desire to stand out and make a statement. Each gold Lamborghini is meticulously crafted, with no expense spared. The body of the car is meticulously coated in pure gold, giving it an unmatched shine and allure. The interiors are adorned with the finest materials, from plush leather seats to intricate gold accents, creating an ambiance fit for royalty. But the extravagance doesn't end with the aesthetics. These gold Lamborghinis are equipped with state-of-the-art technology and performance enhancements, ensuring that the princes experience the pinnacle of luxury and speed. With engines that roar with power and precision, these cars can go from zero to 60 in a matter of seconds, leaving a trail of awe in their wake. It's not uncommon to spot these gold Lamborghinis cruising through the streets of Riyadh or parked outside exclusive events. But the question remains, why gold Lamborghinis? Why not settle for the standard models like everyone else? The answer lies in the princess's desire to push the boundaries of luxury and extravagance. Gold, a precious metal associated with wealth and prosperity, perfectly encapsulates their opulent lifestyle. It's a way for them to demonstrate their ability to turn even the most mundane objects into extraordinary works of art. The cost of these gold Lamborghinis is staggering. While a standard Lamborghini Aventador can set you back a few hundred thousand dollars, the price tag for a gold version costs as much as eight million dollars. Now, if you think gold Lamborghinis are extreme, then you haven't heard of what they do with their pet falcons. And no, they don't dip them in gold, they give them first-class treatments. A falcon can cost as much as ten thousand dollars to acquire and even more to maintain. Now, falconry has a long-standing tradition in Saudi Arabia, with falcons being highly regarded as symbols of prestige and power. It is not not uncommon for the princes to have a deep affinity for these majestic birds, often keeping them as cherished pets. But what sets their falconry apart is the extraordinary measures they take to transport their beloved falcons in the utmost style and comfort. When it comes to flying their falcons, the princes don't settle for ordinary means of transportation. Instead, they opt for private jets and first-class flights exclusively for their feathered companions. These flights are meticulously planned and catered to the specific needs of the falcons, ensuring a seamless and luxurious journey. Imagine a private jet, complete with plush seating and personalized service, solely dedicated to transporting a fleet of falcons. The interior of the jet is specially designed to accommodate the falcon's needs, with spacious compartments and temperature-controlled environments. The falcons are treated like royalty, with their own dedicated handlers and caretakers on board. But it gets even more bizarre because I came across yet another mind-boggling item that Arabian princes buy to showcase their unparalleled opulence. Golden toilets. Yes, you heard it right. These princes spare no expense when it comes to turning even the most mundane of objects into extraordinary displays of luxury. The starting price for a golden toilet is $2,000. An average Arabian mansion has at least 10 bathrooms. Do the math and you begin to see just how insane all of this 
is, but you can't deny the luxury of it all, no matter how insane it might appear. Imagine stepping into a lavatory fit for a king, where every surface gleams with the richness of gold. These golden toilets adorned with intricate designs and embellishments are a testament to the princess's desire for the utmost extravagance, even in the most private of spaces. But why would anyone spend such exorbitant amounts of money on a toilet? For the Saudi princes, it is a way to showcase their wealth and status in the most unexpected of places. It is a statement that no expense is too great when it comes to indulging their desires and living a life of unparalleled luxury. These golden toilets are not just a display of wealth, they also offer a unique sensory experience. The touch of gold against the skin, the shimmering reflections in the bathroom, and the feeling of indulgence that comes with using such a lavatory. It all adds to the overall ambience of luxury that the princes strive to create. It's not uncommon to find these golden toilets in the grand palaces and residences of the Saudi princes. They are a symbol of their extravagant lifestyle and their desire to surround themselves with the finest things in life. It's a way for them to elevate even the most mundane of activities to a level of grandeur that is unmatched. But the golden toilets are not just limited to the prince's private spaces. Some luxury hotels and establishments in Saudi Arabia have also embraced this trend, offering their guests the opportunity to experience the ultimate in opulence and extravagance. It's a way for them to cater to the desires of their affluent clientele and create a truly unforgettable experience. But what's crazier than gold? Diamonds. And if you were an Arabian prince, what would you do with it? Encrust your Mercedes-Benz in it, because that is exactly what Prince Al Talal bin Abdulaziz did for his 38th birthday. This makes the gold-plated Lamborghini look like child's play. It is a mink-furnished Mercedes SL 600 worth $4.8 million. It's not a practical vehicle, and the chances the prince will ever drive it is next to zero. But that's not the point. The point is he owns it.